He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Bringing you continuing, unfiltered, unabashed reality. I am Alex Jones. I am your host. And I'm William Cooper. And I'm your non-fear-mongering, truthful host. When we come back, we're going to open the phones, 520-333-4578. That's 520-333-4578. We'll talk about what you just heard. If you're listening to the Hour of the Time, I'm William Cooper. The phones are open, 520-333-4578. We're going to take your calls. And the first thing I want to talk about is uh, what is he trying to instill in his audience here? With what you've heard, what is he trying to make the audience feel? 520-333-4578. This is all very important, folks. You'll find out in the next couple of days where this goes. And when you find out where it goes, if you weren't listening on December the 31st, uh, you're going to be shocked because it has the smell of a setup. It has the total smell of a setup. 520-333-4578 is the number. Where do you think he's uh, leading his audience? What do you think he's instilling in his audience with what you've heard uh, during that um, during those short snippets? And remember, that's the only only snippets from the first 45 minutes of the broadcast on December the 31st, New Year's Eve. There's still two hours and 15 minutes to go. <laughs> Can you believe it? Two hours and 15 minutes to go, and he's already set the stage for something very serious that's going to happen later. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight. What did it make you feel like? How did you, uh, if if it was December the thirty first, New Year's Eve again, and you knew that at the stroke of midnight everybody was expecting everything to come to a grinding halt because of Y two K, what would this have made you feel like? What would be your emotional state right now if you you know if you were to have an emotional state? The number is 520-333-4578. Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, Bill. I'll just chime in with this. You figure that uh, the uh, Austin, Texas area used to be Jim Hightower country, right? Uh-huh. And it's it's a town in Texas, which, you know, Texas is a relative, relatively conservative so-called state. But I, I think that Metro Austin is a pretty liberal bastion. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Right? It's sort of like... Uh, Far left wing. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like Madison, Wisconsin South. Yeah. And so you figure, I, you know, when I realized that there was a lot of, like, grassroots libertarian type stuff happening in that town, it just made sense to me that the feds, given what was going on with the Republic of Texas thing, were definitely going to focus on that area and probably try to whip things up. Oh, boy, did they ever. And then, you know, Alex Jones was associated with this guy who was... Um, Ah, what was his name? It was the same name as the fellow who was the uh, president of the Confederacy, Jeff Davis. Uh-huh. And I looked at that name and I said, is this guy's name really Jeff Davis? Did his mama call him that? Or did he take on this name to give patriotic people the whiff of, you know, the Confederacy and bigotry? Sure, you're on the right trail. Yeah. So you done a good job exposing him. Look forward to listening to the rest of the tape. Oh, wait, wait a minute. What did that make you feel when you were listening to that? Well, the same, you know, I, I've, listened, I've listened to enough, uh, you know, Bogreit's broadcast to get a feel for that type of stuff. Yeah, they're, they're definitely, you know, whipping people up. I can't imagine who is so gullible who, you know, uh, can get swept up with that, but I guess there's people out there who yeah, can. What, what do you think he was specifically preparing you to, to think? Did you get the whole gist of what he was talking about there? I, I guess I fail to get what you're driving at, beyond what I've said. What was the main thing that he concentrated on? That that Russia was imminently going to attack the continental United States. You got it. That we were going to be nuked by Russia. Right. He spent 45 minutes of the first hour preparing his radio audience to believe that Russia was going to nuke us because of Y2K. 
And guess what happened much later? Well, never mind. Let it be a surprise. <laughs> okay, I, I, I haven't heard it before, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, this was a setup from the word go. This guy is not on our side. He's right. a commercial broadcaster, number one. And number two, he was never a member of the Patriot Movement at all. All of a sudden, he started picking this stuff up and just running with it. Well, let me get a dig in, Bill. Captain Conspiracy, if you're out there, <laughs> Dutch told you so. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's true, folks. Yeah. Bye -bye. Okay, thanks for calling. Yeah. Numbers 520-333-4578. What did you think about it? There's a lot of people out there sitting there scratching your heads. Uh, you heard it. I played it for you right here. You heard it. What did you think about it? If you were listening to that on December the 31st, 1999, how would that make you feel? What would you be, what would be going through your mind? What would you be thinking about? Hello? Anybody home? Or have you all just had a, a, just a total migration of your brain power? You know what I'm talking about out there. And you know me, folks. I only care about the truth, period. The truth. And it's about time some of you got acquainted with the real hard truth. What was going on on New Year's Eve was whipping the American people up into a hysteria, hoping, trying to make them do something that would justify martial law. That's why the military and the federal agencies and the FBI and everybody was all geared up and ready to go. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Bill. This yeah. is Matt from Florida. How are you? Good. Yeah, I think that guy, he was just, uh, I think he's just trying to scare people and uh, get them into a panic. Oh, that, you know, that was just the beginning. And that's not even, he hasn't even started yet. Mm -hmm. That's just the first 45 minutes of a three-hour broadcast. And he's just beginning to get warmed up. Well, uh -huh. I haven't been listening to shortwave too much lately. I've been mostly tuned into the internet uh -huh. and uh, the press. Um, I used to listen to WWCR back around ninety three, ninety four, ninety six, and uh, you hear some of the same kind of things back then uh, for some of these people, but uh, probably not so much like the Y two K crowd. Well, you see, the government knows they can't pull another Waco. Mm -hmm. They got to try and get us to do something to justify what they want to do. And everything that was happening on December the 31st on the Genesis Communications Radio Network and many others mm -hmm. was all trying to whip up the American people to do something stupid so that they could actually declare martial law and start rounding people up. Mm -hmm. it didn't, I've been it making uh, preparations for quite some time as far as uh, food storage and uh, you know, weapons training and uh, some of that kind of stuff. But uh, that's mainly just for... Just whatever happens to come down the pike. Yeah, just not specifically for Y2K. Just hang loose. Yeah, yeah we, I, you should always be prepared for any emergency. But I've the been important making my preparations since really since before Y2K became too hyped up, you know. Oh, I was telling people to get prepared and stock up on two years of uh, of uh, food storage and water and and guns and ammunition, and everything uh, eight years ago. In fact, the, I've got myself a year and a half supply of food, so I, I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, well, that's great. You're going to need it one of these days. Uh -huh. But you, but you, don't ever let anybody whip you up into making it happen. Remember, we must have the moral high ground, so we have to wait for them to do something that justifies acting, yeah, justifies well, restoration by the militia of the lawful constitutional republican government of this country. Uh, the side, the first shot. Besides the fires, the first shot will probably lose public opinion. You know, if they don't have public opinion, absolutely, um, the, the, they'll probably lose the war. That's right. Sure. Whoever fires the first shot loses. I've said that for I've said that since 1989. I've been telling people that, and it's the truth. And if they fire the first shot, and the militia uh, moves against them legitimately and lawfully to restore constitutional republican government, and they bring the military against us, the entire American population will support us. But if we fall into these traps that these people were laying on December the 31st, forget it. It's all over. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that. Well, I'll let you go. Okay, thanks for calling. Good evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. 520-333-4578 is the number. This is like high school, see. You know, I just slammed the popular uh, guy in the senior class, uh, rightfully so, and uh, and I let you know what this guy is really doing 
and you're all scared to death to get on the phone and talk about it. Just like high school. Which brings me back to something else I've always said. America's nothing but a bunch of little chicken cowards. The vast American population, most of them, are cowards. And that's why you all file and pay your income tax, even though none of you can find a law that requires you to do it. <laughs> Isn't that right, folks? Isn't that true? And here, you, you know, that's something else. Do you ever ask Alex Jones if he files and pays income tax? Hmm? Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Bill. It's Monty from Radio Free Vermont. Hi, Monty. Hey. It's basically just to stir up the people. Yeah. Get them all whipped up into a frenzy. Uh-huh. And then get them to take action. Yeah. Upon that frenzy. Oh, they almost uh, succeeded. I mean, people really went off the deep end. And you'll hear what sparked that later. You'll hear that either tomorrow.